right now you're in an impaired mode, right? And you're a passenger in the vehicle, right? Yeah. Think if he was impaired. Think of the dangers of that, getting behind the wheel with somebody who's impaired. You're gonna see by wearing those fatal vision goggles how distorted things are. That's only distorting your vision. Unlike alcohol or drugs, it, they distort your central nervous system, your ability to reason, your ability to make good decisions, right? Yeah. Let me know at the end how it works. All right, okay, we'll just yeah. All right cool. So can we go? Yeah? All right. How's it going? Good, yourself? Not bad. I think it's great. Okay, watch it. Turn it's interesting. I, I mean, I they wear glasses and it impairs your vision by wearing the oh, glasses. The passenger you does. Well, you know what, Gino? Yeah, we're gonna difficult. we're gonna have you put those on and try to follow that white line so you get a good feel. Oh, okay. And then you'll understand where the passenger oh. goes. They don't have they have control of that vehicle. Oh, yeah. He's actually controlling it. Oh, he's actually controlling it. And then it goes into impaired stage mode. Yeah. Where the driver has no no control. Oh, I see. So if it goes off the course, he's going to hit the brake. Uh, it gives him the feeling of being out of control. Okay. So did you set the, how did this all come about? Because um, I teach health, and basically we did um, drunk goggles in my classroom my first semester. And drunk goggles, which are basically these, okay. so you can try them if you want. All right, yeah, well, and the kids really got so much out of them. Mr. Lucchini said to me, I think they have state peace has some go karts. I have to watch you guys if you're in the I got it. I'm um, 18. Okay, so scares me. So basically, you mean you have to watch them do it? Because they can't walk straight? Yeah, they they can fall over right now. So with Mr. Lucchini, um, kind of gave me an idea, so I called just Mr. Ellis. Oh my gosh. Guys, <laughs> and with Mr. Ellis' help, it took us about four or five months to get this whole program together. What's your name? Emily. How, what grade are you in? Uh, I'm a junior. Junior? What do you think of this? Uh, it's... You know, you gotta put a sure, sure. Good thing you have your legs already back up there. Okay. Uh, your glasses oh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Follow that yellow line. And then turn right, right there. Hard right. There you go. Nice. <laughs> now they're going to. Yeah, now they're controlling. Wow. They control it. Wow. Uh, I don't know. That's kind of. How old are you? Uh, 17. 17. And I guess they're preparing everybody for the prom here. Is that right? Is that yeah. kind of what they, the idea here? Okay, yeah, get back on the course. Eh? I drove a go-kart the other day. <laughs> Look at that, how they take you right out of it. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Okay, now it's just not going. I guess that's it. No, I know. But... Follow that yellow line, stop at the white one. <laughs> It was fun. Yeah. Okay, now what if that was the real world? What if you were behind the wheel of a motor vehicle? It wouldn't have been so fun, right? No. How many things did you hit? Um, a lot. A lot? Yeah. Cones? Yeah. How many? I'd say like 10, 12. So how many different crashes did you have in that two minute course? A lot. <laughs> About what, three, four different crashes? Yeah. Why would you say? Do you have driving experience? Yeah. You do? You have a license? Yes. How long have you been driving? Uh, since September. Since September. Have you hit anything in the real world? Have you had any? No. no? Okay. That's probably because he had you on impaired mode. And you know what impaired mode is? Not under the influence. Pardon me? Not under the influence of anything. Operating under the influence. He had you on impaired, which is right here. He switched it to impaired mode, mm -hmm. which means that you were operating under the influence of alcohol or drugs or something else. Maybe it was text messaging. If people are, are driving and not watching the road, they're impaired, yeah. right? So if you were text messaging driving down the road on impaired and you hit all those things, think if they were people, God, the things we talked about before. You tried yeah. to walk the line? Yeah. What, what was that like? That just uh, seems so bizarre. I felt dizzy. It was, feel, yeah. It makes you feel dizzy? Yeah. yeah. Do, do you think it's going to have an effect on you? Do you think doing this? Yeah. What, do, what is your opinion of what they're doing here? Well, I don't know. I think they don't drink. Right. It's yeah, it can kill you. Yeah. Yeah. You guys wouldn't do that anyway, would you? No. Right? Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> so now you won't. Oh, wow. Look at that, man. That is unreal. Wow. Okay, now. Now, see, I can see this. I think I can do it. So bizarre. Whoa. Look at that, though. See, I won't fall down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Everything that we can come at this thing from any angle that we can get. And this is an additional angle that we've got to have the state police come. And we're really fortunate to have them come bring these resources to Nantucket. Um, it's an enjoyable experience for the kids to come out on a nice day like this and do something like this. Absolutely. But it does have a point, and we're in a whole section within health class where we're talking about alcohol, marijuana, other drugs, and uh, all those issues. So this will be, uh, there'll be follow-up material and discussions in class and so on and so forth. So Great. Not just an isolated Good. event. Good. This is one of the many things we do in the traffic program section. It's uh, proactive policing, uh, educating people, particularly high school students today, now that it's prom season, as to the dangers of driving while impaired. Uh, the traffic program section that I work in is also responsible for operating our breath alcohol testing mobiles. We do demonstrations with the rollover simulator. We're responsible for getting federal grant monies through the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security in order to go out and do proactive policing such as click it or ticket. We go out and we do campaigns such as road respect to make sure that people aren't driving aggressively. So it's an educational uh, component to what we do. Uh, the state police feels it's very important to educate the public as well as enforce laws. Education is paramount to enforcement. The Sid Sydney Vehicles, which is an acronym for Simulated Impaired Driving Experience, has been in effect with the state police since the fall of 2009. We just started it, so it's fairly new. This is the fourth public event we've done. We've been to three high schools and a college so far. This is the third high school today. We felt it was important to come here to Nantucket because the Nantucket uh, sergeant, who the commanding officer, Sergeant Jim Ellis, asked us to be here to represent the state police because uh, this island is under the state police jurisdiction. We felt it was important to make a presence here and to uh, educate these uh, fine men and women of the school as to the dangers of impaired driving. The focus today on impaired driving would be alcohol, drugs, uh, and of course, even things like texting. Many of our students, many of the, the operators on the road today are impaired by distractions. So we're showing them how difficult it is, especially when that unit is on impaired, uh, how difficult it is to control. We want to show them in a controlled environment what happens when you're not focused on the road or whether you're impaired by alcohol or drugs. And that's the focus. I think I, I think the benefit is also uh, in a psychological way of having all of you state cops right here standing there while they're impaired to, to actually see, you know, have the effect of, hey, I'm driving and I've got all these cops around. I'm going to remember that right. when I get into a car and I have anything to drink, I don't drive. Right. I think it could have an effect. Absolutely. And, and we feel it's very important to... Uh, come down to their level too. Right. Um, let them know that, you know, the uniform does mean something, the presence of police means something, but we're just like everybody else. We're, we're fathers and mothers and brothers and sisters and sons and daughters and, and we're just like anybody else. And the toughest thing for any trooper or police officer to do is a death notification. I've done about five or six of them in my 17, going on 17 year career. It's the most difficult thing a police officer has to do. We'd much rather be here dedicating our resources here today in a proactive approach to get these kids to do the right thing. Now, do we think that every single one of them is going to listen and, and heed our advice? No. There's always going to be a few in the crowd that aren't going to listen and aren't going to do the right thing. But if we save one life, just one life, it's worth it. And we know that we're saving more than one life. Whether it's here today, whether it's at a roadblock, doing a sobriety checkpoint, we, we know that we're saving lives. When we take an impaired grandfather off the road who's driving while impaired with his five-month-old granddaughter in the front seat, not in a baby seat, behind an airbag, we know we've done our